Judah, and Tamar. It's another PG-13. Eh, depending on how you tell it, maybe an R-rated story from the Old Testament. So Judah had some sons. Well, first he goes and he marries himself a, a Canaanite. And that's probably not a good thing from what we heard uh, last time in, in, in our time together. But so he marries himself a Canaanite and he gets a, a couple different sons, Ur, uh, Onan, and Selah. Those are the three sons, right? Ur is the oldest, so he gets the wife first and he finds Tamar for, for Ur, but Ur is evil in the sight of the Lord. And uh, so the Lord puts him to death. And then we've got Onan. So Onan's now married uh, to Tamar. And you might ask, why indeed is, is this happening? Why is, is the younger brother marrying uh, uh, his, his uh, uh, older brother's wife? And the reason for that is something called Leverite marriage. And that's why I put that Deuteronomy 25 thing there. Uh, the whole idea of Leverite marriage was if your uh, brother had a wife but did not give her a son, produce offspring for her before he died, it was your duty to do that for her and it would carry on his name. And the whole reason for that was so that the the, the woman would be protected and, and, and had a, a way to be tied to land and tied to a family name and all of that. So it was all the idea of, of, of preserving the name and then also protecting the woman. Well, Onan refuses to give an offspring to Tamar because he knows that it won't be his. It'll be viewed uh, legal in the, uh, legally uh, uh, under, underneath his brother. And so he refuses to do that. The Lord sees this as evil and puts him to death as well. Well, you can imagine what Judah's thinking. Judah is thinking, this woman is cursed and there's no way I'm going to give this woman uh, to my youngest son, uh, but I, I'll promise that I will. Well, he promises that he will and Years and years goes by and Selah grows up and is old enough to get married and Tamar isn't married to her. And a whole sword thing goes on and long story short, Tamar pretends to be a prostitute and has intercourse with Judah and she gets pregnant. And then Judah is infuriated because he finds out that his daughter-in-law is pregnant and not married. And then he finds out that it's actually his now, all of that's crazy enough, and, and we could talk about uh, the very then and there instance and why that's all important. We can talk about the Leverite marriage and how Judah was doing something evil and how Onan and Ur were doing something evil and maybe even how Tamar was doing something evil, even though she thought she was just trying to preserve herself and her own livelihood. And all of that's true and all of that's there, but I think the most important thing that we have to see, and the reason I think that Onan was put to death by God, was not that he wasn't giving Tamar a son, but I think it had to do with the line. And again, this always comes back to the line. We've got this promise of our Lord for a Messiah. And when you read the genealogies, right? You read the genealogies in Matthew and the genealogies in Luke, you've got who? You've got Judah and you've got Tamar. And you've got their child, which is in the genealogies. And so it's this preservation of this line that our Lord is making sure is happening so that he can, yes, bring about salvation through the incarnation of his son. And so even this story right here, even this is about Jesus.